going to talk about the Canon RF 50mm f1.2 L lens. Now, this is not a new lens. This actually was released at the same time as the EOS R. It's, an, it's a launch lens, basically, for the RF ecosystem. But I've been using it recently with the R5, which has been a really, really nice setup. And I think this is worth talking about. We did a video recently on the RF 50mm f1.8, essentially the Nifty 50 for the RF mount. But this is a completely different beast. This is an f1.2 lens. This is an L lens. The image quality out of this is outrageous. And we've never done a proper video on it. So let's talk about this lens properly. Now, first of all, obviously, this is a lot bigger than the Nifty 50. That's fair enough. We would expect nothing less. As a 1.2 aperture, this is obviously a nice big lens to let lots of light in. And let's talk about that image quality because it looks so fantastic. Now, 50 millimeters obviously gives you a great kind of standard field of view. It's a great kind of all rounder, which is why I think it's probably launched alongside the EOS R camera and the kind of a launch lens for that kind of ecosystem. You know, 50 mil lets you do portraits, great for headshots, great for kind of wider portraits. You can do landscape, bit of street photography. Admittedly, it's a bit big probably for street stuff, but you can do all kinds of stuff. And because it's f1.2, it just adds that kind of versatility in terms of events. You know, you can be able to really work with low light, letting loads of light in to that camera. And of course, with cameras like the R5 and actually the EOS R as well, you can bump up that ISO without any problem. So in terms of low light, this is going to be hard to beat. But of course, it is just a generally very versatile lens. Now, when this came out, one of the kind of issues was this lens has no stabilization in it, which for the most part is probably fine. I mean, generally portraits and landscape, the stuff you're gonna shoot with, not too much of an issue. If you're gonna shoot handheld video with this, you might miss the stabilization, but I don't think it was too much of an issue. However, that problem kind of doesn't exist as much now because with cameras like the R6 and the R5, where you have in-body image stabilization in the cameras, that problem kind of immediately just goes away. You don't have to worry about that because you can just use the stabilization in the cameras. Now, of course, it's not gonna work as well as with a stabilized lens when they kind of combine and give you that incredible stabilization, but it's still very, very good. So it gives you a lot of options for how you wanna use this for photo and for video. So let's talk about how this performs in terms of image quality and all that kind of stuff. I've used this mostly for photography, did a bit of portrait work, a little bit of landscape, that sort of thing. But this would obviously work as a video lens as well. 50mm gives you a great kind of field of view for that kind of thing. And the nice bokeh you're going to get from that f1.2 can look very cinematic. Now, image quality wise, no surprise, this is outstanding. L lenses tend to be really top of the line in this kind of field. But we are talking about really, really good image quality with this lens. Everything's very sharp, even wide open at f1.2, right out to the corners. I didn't really have any distortion. It just looks very, very good. I can't get over, you know, the Canon colors, we all know, look fantastic. The sharpness of this lens looks fantastic. And that bokeh, oh, that is super smooth. That is super, super nice. So absolutely, in terms of image quality, portraits, whatever you're doing, this is gonna look fantastic. It is worth noting, there's some pretty heavy vignetting at f1.2. Now, it's not super surprising to be honest. We see that sometimes with lenses like this. I actually don't mind it. I quite like the look at f1.2 of having a bit of vignetting. Now, of course you can fix that in post, you can fix that in Lightroom. It's pretty easy to sort out, but when you stop down, that kind of pretty much goes away. So not really that much of a problem, I don't think, unless you really, really don't want that in camera. Uh, I don't think it's that much of an issue. There is also pretty noticeable focus breathing as well. Almost a little bit of a zoom, actually, when you're, when you're manually focusing, you can really see it. So if that's going to matter to you, that's worth bearing in mind. But to me, that's not that much of a big deal. You know, that's probably going to affect video users more so than photography users, but it's worth being aware that it exists. We've mentioned that there's no stabilization, but the actual lens itself it's a pretty decent weight. It's not light, it's about a kilogram. So it could be heavier, but it's not super light. But what that does is sometimes heavier lenses like this, it kind of stabilizes itself a little bit and you get a kind of a better look to it. Without it being too light, it's not gonna wobble around. It's not gonna shake as much. So I quite like that if you are trying to stabilize it. Of course, you can use the in-body stabilization of things like the R6 and R5, like I mentioned before as well. Otherwise, the actual feel of the lens is decent without being kind of, super obviously premium quality. So it's a little bit more plasticky than you might expect for a lens of this sort of level. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate that it's, it's good 
quality plastic, if that makes sense. It's not flimsy by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not metal, you know? Um, but otherwise, it's kind of fine. There's not a huge amount of controls on it. You've got the AFMF switch and then just a focus kind of point switch for full focus and then 0 0.8 meters to infinity. You've got the focus ring on there as well, which is kind of a decent size and it's, it's weighted quite nicely as well. And of course, you've got that control ring that you see on RF lenses like this. And that, I think, is really nice. You know, you can use it as an aperture ring, you can change it, you can customize it. And I know that's nothing new now, but I really like seeing that on the RF lenses. I think it works really well and Canon have obviously committed to that. We see it on all the RF lenses, which is really, really nice. Also focus wise, it's not that there's anything super wrong with this lens, it's just not the fastest. Now, the R5 autofocus is, is actually is super good, the R6 as well. You know, the EOS R didn't have bad autofocus at all, but it's obviously stepped up definitely, as you would expect, with the R5 and the R6. And using this with those cameras, I didn't have any problems. It wasn't hunting or anything like that. It just isn't the fastest. And to an extent, that is... Fair enough, it's a pretty big bit of glass that has to be moved around here. So I'm not super surprised that it's not the fastest. It does work absolutely fine with the IAF. So in terms of portraits and stuff like that, no problem at all. And of course, just while we're speaking about portraits, we really should touch back on that bokeh. F1.2 obviously lets a lot of light in, so you can get some really nice bright images, even in lower light, much, much lower light. And that bokeh does look fantastic. You know, it's a really beautiful look to your images. It's just a lovely, lovely lens in terms of optical quality. I think the build quality is nice as well, but optical quality is, is really where this is at. So, you know, coming from the 50mm f1.8, which I was using uh, a couple of weeks ago, this is a dream to use. So a lovely, lovely lens. And of course, there's a link down in the description so you can go and check out the lens for yourself. If you have any questions as well, pop them down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.